This is an MCP 5-Minute Moment brought to you by the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection's Bureau of Waste Site Cleanup. Today we'll talk about a second way of finding information about specific 21E sites that are in our data system. In a previous segment, episode 93A, we talked about the Waste Site Reportable Release File Viewer. That was specific to EDP submitted documents. In this segment, we'll use the Reportable Release Lookup application, otherwise known as the Searchable Sites List. This application gives you access to all the submittals, whether they were submitted electronically through EDEP or the older paper documents that MassDEP had scanned. The database behind this application is updated daily. You can search this application by town name, site address, and release tracking number, all of which are pretty standardized. Or you can search by the site name, which is somewhat random. You can also search by site status, which means where they are in the cleanup process, or by the LSP, licensed site professional, who is working on the project. You can also limit your search to those sites that have activity and use limitations, or AULs. Getting to the searchable site list is pretty easy. The mass.gov website is specifically designed to work well with search engines. So simply Google the words contaminated property in Massachusetts. Find out about a contaminated property should appear very close to the top of the results. There's a lot of useful information on this page even before you get to the actual search function. If you're not familiar with the semi-privatized wayside cleanup program we have here in Massachusetts, the guide at the top of the page should be very helpful. Below that, you'll find two boxes which link to the actual search applications, one being the EDP search that we talked about in episode 93A, and the other being the subject of this video, the waste site and reportable releases lookup. Below that, I would recommend downloading the PDF document Understanding the Search Results, which will help explain a lot of the information that you'll be seeing in the search application. You'll also see links to these instructional videos. Scrolling up the page, let's click on the waste site and reportable releases lookup box. It's a pretty standard search application, but let's first zoom in so we get a better view of it. I found that the first thing that most people want to know is what contaminated sites are in my backyard. So let's do a search by town. Just click on the drop down list for town and you'll see a alphabetized list of all the cities and towns in Massachusetts. Let's pick one. How about Ashby? Clicking on the search button will bring up all the 21 e sites that have been notified in the town of Ashby. Now one good reason to use Ashby as an example is that there's only one page worth of sites. You'll see it's page one of one. Some cities and towns will have multiple pages. You'll also notice that there's a big view map button in the upper left hand corner of the results box. You now see a map that shows you most, if not all, of the sites in Ashby. Keep in mind that if you're looking at a town that has multiple pages of sites, this map will only show you those sites on that first page. You'll have to go back, look at the next page, and view map for that set of sites as well. Notice that the different colored dots have different meanings. Red is for open sites, blue for closed sites, and green for closed sites with activity and use limitations. Back in the map, if you actually click on a dot, you'll get information about that particular site. Basic information like the site name, the release tracking number, the address, etc. But also there's a link down at the bottom for more information about that site. Click there and you'll get the site's information summary page. We'll come back to that in a moment, but first I want to go back to the map and explore some of its features. Click on the data layers button in the upper right hand corner and you'll see a list of additional information that you can put on the map. Let's zoom in and you can pause here to look at the list. As an example, I'm going to click on the approved wellhead protection areas, otherwise known as zone twos, in the interim wellhead protection areas or IWPAs. I'm also going to change the base map so that this new information will stand out. Now you can better see the relationship between the 21E disposal sites and the groundwater protection areas that we might be concerned about. As you saw, there's a lot more information that's available to put on these maps, so take some time, explore it, find out what it can do. But now we'll go back to the search box and do another example so you can see how to search using multiple criteria. Several of the search boxes have drop-down lists which we've included to help make your searches easier and more standardized. For this example, I'm going to look for sites in Boston on Washington Street, and I'm going to look for sites that are in remedy operation status. These are sites that are undergoing active cleanup at the moment. Having played with this a little bit before doing this video, I know that there are over 5,000 disposal sites in the city of Boston. And I know that there are over 1,000 sites statewide that are on some combination of Washington Street or Washington Road or Washington Place. And I know that there are almost 400 sites that are in remedy operation status at the moment. I also now know that there are only two sites that meet all three of these criteria. And here they are. 
You'll notice that the release tracking number, or RTN, over on the left-hand side of the list is a hyperlink. So let's click on one and go to the site's information summary page. The print is small, so we'll zoom in on each of these three sections to see what's there. You'll see information about the site from our database, things such as the compliance status or, when known, the source of the contamination. You'll also see information about response actions, activities that have taken place for the site, including uh, where applicable, whether an audit has been conducted by MassDEP. There's also information about the chemicals that have been reported at the site and links to information about the licensed site professional, or LSP, who's working on the case. Some sites have more than one reportable release at that location, and if so, you'll see related release tracking numbers, or RTNs, on this section. But perhaps the best thing about this site information summary page is that box in the upper left-hand corner that contains the words supporting documents. Click there and you get a list of documents that DEP has available for this site. You see four columns. Two of them have links to actual documents. On the left are the transmittal forms, and on the right are the attachments, often Word or PDF documents, that have come in associated with that transmittal form. You'll also notice that there are two tabs, one for electronically submitted files and the other for scanned files. Be sure to check both tabs for documents since MassDEP only started requiring electronic documents in 2009. Anything we received before before that would have come in on paper and would have been scanned. The list of scanned files presents itself a little differently because there aren't any transmittal forms that go along with it. But you can click on one of the document names and bring up an image of the paper document that was submitted to DEP in the past, including documents going back to the early 1980s. So make sure you go back and bookmark these pages now because it's an incredibly useful tool that will give you access to all types of submittals that have come into DEP, whether it was electronically submitted through EDP or the old paper documents. The MassDEP searchable sites list is your place for one-stop file review regardless of where you are.